Man, 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 good morning. It is hump day. It is Wednesday in the middle of the week right here in the hot Arkansas Delta. Good grief, this heat. It will just be bodacious warm on you today if you happen to go outside. What's going on, everybody? What is going on? It is a beautiful, sunshiny, hot day right here in the Delta, and God is not playing around. He is cooking the Arkansas Delta like nobody's business. I mean, he is doing it. Woo, it's hot. Right now, y'all ready for this? It is 83 degrees, and the heat index is already 98 at 9.01 in the morning. The heat index, y'all, y'all, it's 98 degrees out there right now. This, this is quick. I mean, I can't even. Oh, my goodness. Guys, good morning. Come on in here and say hello to the preacher. Come on in here and say howdy at me. Let me know that you're here. And then please do us all that favor and hit that share button. Y'all, we're having some rocking and rolling times on the chat, so you got to get them people in here. Right now, go ahead and invite your friends, invite your family to come on in and hang out with us. We would love to have them here hanging out with us today. It is a good day. It's a glorious day, and we got all kinds of stuff to chit-chat about today. I mean, it is a busy day today that we're going to sit back and talk about. Uh, you know, we, we had a good online Sunday school last night, but boy, oh boy, did we have some for real, uh, technical difficulties. I mean, Satan was all over that thing. He did not want us to do what we did. He did not want brother Larry teaching for no means. Uh, and it, you know, I tell you what, it was almost to get to be a pain. Wouldn't let my, uh, wouldn't let brother Larry come on in. At all. I mean, just it, it was kicking him off all the time. And then just at the time that he went to go in, doggone Facebook kicked me off. I mean, just kabam, kicked me off the live. And I had to totally restart that dude. So uh, uh, third time was charm. And we got in, got Brother Larry in, and he began uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes. And so uh, if you miss that, you might want to go back and, and pick that up. If you were not on campus or if you were not able to join us last night, y'all, it was good stuff. Just for real faux shizzle, good stuff. And so uh, I want to encourage you to get back over there. And, and of course, uh, uh, Brother Larry, was uh, he'd been out on the lake, so he was raring to go. He was rip snorting, raring to go. So that was all taking place last night. If you missed it, you can just scroll right down just a little bit, and uh, it is all right there for you. I'm in the process of getting things ready so I can see who all is here. Man, when you get in, say hello. Let me know who all is here and watching. And then uh, uh, we are going to chit-chat. Like I said, we have got some funny things that are out in the world today that I'm, I'm just going to blow your mind. Who all is here? But Brian Potter. Good morning, Brian. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Hey, great news. Uh, Brian, uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and share your good news that you sent me last night. So if you want to type that out, go ahead and do that. Some good news coming out of Brian Ponder this morning. Uh, good morning, Mary Weddington. Hey, there's Alan Weddington. Good morning, buddy. What's going on? What is going on? Uh, let's see here. Boom, shaka, lock. Hi, Miss Judy. How you doing today, lady? How are you? Let's see here. There's Miss Andy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's see here. Who else? It had a great ending. Good. Luck. It was. It was fabulous. Fabulous, darling. Just fabulous. Come on in, folks. Say howdy. Hit the share button. All that good stuff. Hi, Debbie Tacker. What's going on, lady? How you doing this morning? Come on in. I think I see Tommy Gray sneaking in the building. Tommy, you in here? What's up, buddy? How's things up on your hill this morning? How is things up on Tommy Gray's hill? Give us a holla. Give us a holler. Man, Man, is anybody keeping up with the Olympics? I mean, I know Debbie Tacker is. Is anybody else keeping up with the Olympics? Uh, you know, it's like I said, we don't have cable, so we don't, we're not watching it and, and probably wouldn't uh, this year anyway. Just got too many things going on. But uh, Tommy says it is hot up on that hill, brother. That's what I'm talking about. No, no, uh uh. Tommy, let me, let me share something with you. I'm, I'm going to type something out. It is not H O T, it is H A W T. It is hot. It is hot up in here. Now, let me tell you what. It is some kind of hot. Yeah, okay, the Olympics. Like, like I said, we're not, uh, we're not keeping up with it, but uh, uh, Miss Sandy says, I'm watching the Olympics and love it. See, I, we used to do that, 
And if we had cable, we probably would. I'll, I'll be honest with you, we probably would. But since we don't have it, you know, it's not like we're missing it. So it's okay. But I do read the headlines. But there's been two things that's come out of the headlines overnight that have really uh, yeah, kind of stuck with me. And, uh, you know, this, this young lady from the United States that was billed to be the greatest of all time gymnastics, uh, two days ago, two days ago, she pulled out of the, uh, of the team round. Uh, they, uh, USA was projected to win the gold and she pulled out, she just had a mental breakdown. And uh, so she pulled out for mental health reasons. And I applaud her for that, by the way, that was a great decision on her part. And USA ended up winning silver, which was a rarity. It was a rarity. But now overnight, she has now announced that, um, she has pulled out of the individual all around competition. And she was projected to win gold in the individual all around. And she has now pulled out. And uh, they are uh, the doctors are, are are checking on her day by day to see if uh, she's going to be able mentally able to compete in the individual competitions next week. So that's huge news uh, coming out of the uh, of the Olympic Village. Her name is Simone Biles, uh, just a an incredible athlete. I mean, a world class athlete. And so it really breaks my heart to see that for her. But she made the great decision. It was her. And, uh, and I applaud that. I really do. Huge, huge news, though, coming out of the Olympic Village. Well, let's see here. Uh, Brian, I'm scheduled for surgery at UAMC at the University of Arkansas Medical Center to get his voice back. Uh, it's a highly recommended uh, for the doctor there, and that is right. Brian is already scheduled to get that surgery done to get his voice back. And, folks, we need to pray like mad with Brian, okay? Let's do that. Let's get that done for Brian. I know that he is excited about that. Uh, also, it is it is the 37th wedding anniversary for our friends Tommy and Arlene Allen. Happy anniversary, you guys. Happy anniversary. I hope you guys have 37 more. Ah, oh, man, oh, man, that's exciting for you guys. So exciting. Tommy, take that woman out for lunch today. I mean, go to, go to the island. Go to Catfish Island. Get that woman some, some serious fish today. That's what she needs. Mm -mm -mm. Good, good stuff. Let's see what uh, Miss Sandy said something. The swimmers are killing it. Yes, they are. They are really good. They are really good. But now something else that came out to, uh, you know, I, I think probably came out yesterday, but I'm just now seeing it is, uh, uh, you know, every country gets to send uh, competitors. You know, if you have somebody in individual sports, the country of Bermuda, okay, the little bitty country of Bermuda won, won uh, their first gold medal in the history of the country, Bermuda. Uh, the, the lady's name was Flora Duffy, and she won gold in the women's triathlon. So big, big news, okay, out of, uh, you know, the Olympic Village. And like I said, there's other things going on. Swimmers are absolutely smoking it over there, okay? USA swimmers are just tearing up Jake. So uh, if, uh, check your headlines, watch it, enjoy all of the pageantry. Uh, it's, it's just good stuff. And you are seeing the best athletes in the world compete. Nothing, nothing like it. Nothing like it at all. Hey, uh, we got some more news we're going to come back to, but let's go ahead and let's pick up our daily Bible verses. We're talking about holding on to God's promises. It's real ironic. Today, we're going into 2 Samuel, and we're going just a few verses over from where our text is. And so today, we are in 2 Samuel 7, and that verse is 28. 2 Samuel 7, 28. Guys, need to highlight this bad boy, okay? This is a humdinger. Ready? 2 Samuel 7, verse 28. And now, O Lord God, you are God and your words are true. And you have promised this goodness to your servant. Man, what powerful words coming out of the heart of David. Powerful, powerful words. Love, love, love it. So that is 2 Samuel 7, 28. You definitely want to hold on to that. We are just a couple days away from ending our uh, study as we looked at holding on to God's promises. We begin on uh, Sunday is our new Bible reading plan, and it is Finding Peace Through Pain. Finding Peace Through Pain. You can pick these up on campus. 
You can pick them up tonight. If you are on campus for our Wednesday night Bible study, you can pick them up Sunday, whatever the case may be. I also, yesterday morning, right after our live, I posted these uh, here on this page. So you can go right back down and uh, uh, zip that out, make a copy of it uh, if you want to for your house. So that is all right there. All begins on Sunday, August the 1st. Finding peace through pain. I'm really excited to get in the middle of that too. I hope that uh, uh, you are liking this new format that we're doing, having a verse or a section of verses a day on a basic theme per month. Uh, I, I do. I really like this and I, and I think it bodes well for us. Man, we got all kinds of folks coming in, guys. Great to see you. Say hello when you get here. Please be sure to hit that share button. Just a reminder, tonight, 6.30, we're back on campus as we are studying letters from the lockdown. Paul's letter to the church at Philippi tonight, 6.30, as we continue. You definitely want to be on campus. Coffee's going to be there. It's going to be strong. Uh, man, your friends and fellowship's going to be there. So come on out, hang out, and let's, uh, and let's study together. Good morning, Ruth Hastings. Miss Ruth Hastings is coming on in to the building today. Let's see what else have I got today. Uh, uh, let's see here. How many of you remember, uh, uh, Brian is my uncle, my name is Byron, Brian, oh yeah, 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 uh, just, I, you know, but it's amazing what happens when you flip them two letters around, right, Brian, uh, here's the thing, uh, you remember back, uh, some of you will remember this, you remember the original character of Rosie the Riveter? You know, this was back when women were big in uh, in, in, in production uh, based around World War II. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember that? Rosie the Riveter, Pam, first U.S. female, first U.S.A. female to win gold in Taekwondo. I did see that. Now that you mentioned it, I did forget that. Uh, that and that's that's amazing. I mean, that is amazing. I love it. I love it. Rosie the Riveter. Who remembers Rosie the Riveter? Everybody raise your hand right now for, to say, I remember Rosie the Riveter. You know, it, it was the picture of this, uh, of this female. She was in work clothes. She had a red bandana tied around her head, and she was, you know, kind of pumping iron. Y'all remember Rosie the Riveter? Uh, uh, just, she was an icon, uh, you know, back in World War II. And what it was is uh, women were used to help boost the USA's uh, military arsenal production. They were, they were making weapons, okay? And they were, I, I mean, they were good. Well, they were based on actual characters, and, and you may have already known that, and I really probably did, but I've forgotten about it. You know, the older I get, the more I forget. Uh, but these were based on actual characters, and, and Rosie was the generic name for that class of women. Well, there were six, evidently, there were six original women that they patterned this character after, Rosie the Riveter. And one of the six, one of the original six died uh, over the past couple of days. Her name was Phyllis Gould. Phyllis Gould, one of the original six, Rosie the Riveters. Uh, and she was 99 years old. 99 years old. Y'all get this, okay? Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? This is gonna blow your mind, okay? I mean, right now we're talking about minimum wage cooking at about 15 bucks an hour, okay? Y'all ready for this? She worked at a California shipyard for 90 cents an hour. 90 cents an hour. That's just mind blowing. 90 cents an hour. So, serious, I can't imagine. Now, I, I, you know, I didn't make much more than that when I first went to work uh, back when I was 18, but uh, uh, still, 90 cents an hour, it's just hard to fathom, right? I mean, that's, that's just really, really hard to fathom. 90 cents an hour. Rosie the Riveter, one of the original six, passed away. Uh, uh, and I don't want to be a gloom and doom, but I do want to. Just kind of bring something to our attention, okay? Uh, yesterday, yesterday there were over 2,000 cases of COVID reported in the state of Arkansas. Okay, the numbers are, are drastically being jacked up, okay? The thing I want to point out is not those numbers, but the number of hospitalizations, okay? And this has really caught my attention, okay? There, this was yesterday's report. There are over 1,000 people 
in the state of Arkansas in the hospital. Over a thousand. Um, that's just uh, that's just ridiculous. There uh, there was a report that came out yesterday, and I, I want to make sure that I read this. Uh, there were 45 additional hospitalizations yesterday, okay, additional 45. Uh, and there were additional 33 folks put on ventilators yesterday. Now, like I said, this is not gloom and doom. I'm just, I'm just sharing the news, okay? I'm, I'm just reading some things. But the thing that got me yesterday was one of the doctors in Little Rock, and I'm not going to give you his name. It's, it's in the news. He's an ER doctor. And he said that they are at a point that was warned about a year ago. As of yesterday, there are no available ICU beds in the state. None. And he said four days ago, they called five surrounding states looking for ICU beds, and they were unsuccessful to find any. So, just saying, okay? Just say it. The thing you've got to do, okay, is just be careful, all right? Make sure you're social distancing. Wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer. I think we're going to go back to, to the mask. I think it's coming, okay? Don't, don't take my word for it. I do think it's coming. Um, it, it's here. It is here. It has not gone away. And so we've just got to be, folks, we've got to be careful. Okay, we just got to be careful. And even vaccinated people are getting this again. Okay, so uh, just be careful. All right, just just be careful. I've got one more bit of news. And this is about the funniest thing I think I have read in a long time. And you cannot make this stuff up, okay? Don't you leave this place today saying, Brother Jim is out there just lying like a dog. He's not doing this. This is actual news today, Okay. Guy, I'm not lying. Seriously, guys, you cannot make it up. In the town of Fishers, Indiana. Fishers, Indiana. And I'm not real sure geographically. I think it's close to Indianapolis, if you, if you know the truth. But anyway, Fishers, Indiana. I've got a real good pastor buddy of mine. Him and his family live uh, in Indiana. I'm going to message him today and see if this is him that's doing this. Anyway, he, he'll get a big bang up. Anyway, y'all ready for this? There is a serial pooper in the town. Yes, you heard that right. There is a serial pooper in the town of Fishers, Indiana. He is going around at night doing his business in people's yards, in businesses, on their doorsteps, on play, and, and he's leaving this nice little, little bit of toilet paper, the whole thing. Serial pooper in Fishers, Indiana. You can't make this stuff up. I, I can't imagine. It just blows my ever-loving mind. Okay? I just... So, so uh, just when you think <laughs> you've heard it all, you run into something like this. So, uh, yeah. Fishers, <laughs> Fishers, Indiana, a serial pooper. Jeez. You know, you know what would be fun? Okay, now come on. Come on. If you could sit out in your yard in, in camouflage at night... And you got yourself a paint gun, and I'm talking one of those high octane paint guns. And that dude gets in your yard, and he begins to take care of his business, and you just unload on that dude with that paint gun, y'all, y'all. I would do that. I mean, I would do that in a hurry. But now, if you really want to know what what your preacher would do, okay, I'm gonna tell you what your preacher would do. All right, I would sit out in my yard. I would be camouflaged. You would not find me, okay? And the minute that dude dropped his drawers, I would fire a barrage of bottle rockets at that dude. I mean, I would hum him down. I would have them strategically located throughout my yard that with one flick of the switch, there would be a massive bottle rocket attack aimed at his backside. Yes, I would. And I would film that dude. Oh, my goodness. I would take care of him. I would do it. I would do it in a heartbeat. Uh, you, I wouldn't even ask questions. I would have no remorse about that stuff, y'all. I would do it. Oh, my word, that'd be good. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you even something else. And, and Y'all remember the Little Rascals? I mean, the original Little Rascals? It was one of my favorite TV shows growing up. 
There was an episode one time. See, was it Stimey? It might have been Spanky. Anyway, there was a guy dressed up like a uh, like a witch doctor, and they were tormenting the kids to do something. And so it, somebody stumbled into a box of fireworks, and they got out a Roman candle. You know them things that shoots like 10 or 12 things out? And they lit that dude. And these kids chased that guy that was dressed up like some voodoo witch doctor dancing around. And they would aim that Roman candle at his backside and they led him up in his grass skirt. All the, Oh my God, I, to this day, it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. And so if I couldn't get bottle rockets, I guarantee you I'd have Roman candles. I would torch that dude's backside. He would never once again think about doing his business in my yard. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm-mm-mm. Now you talk about TikTok famous, baby. I would be TikTok famous. I would do it. Oh, oh, just, <laughs> just the thought of that, y'all. Just the thought of that, y'all, just gets my juices pumping. I mean, pumping. Okay. Enough foolishness for the day. Serial pooper, Fisher's Indian. I am calling my preacher buddy up there, and I'm going to say, brother, you need to stop all that mess. Literally, stop it all. All right. Oh, God. Hold on. I got to get some more coffee after that. That's good. Mm -mm -mm. All right, folks, we're continuing in 2 Samuel. We're in chapter 6. So go ahead and get your Bibles turned on over there. 2 Samuel chapter 6. While you're doing that, let me just go ahead and just real quick hit hit our brief announcements tomorrow and Friday. Lord willing, we'll be right back here at 9 a.m. I hope you're bringing your friends to hang out and join us. And to just enjoy this study as we're going through. Tommy says, I was a little rascal. No, Tommy, that is incorrect. The statement should say, I am a little rascal. And Arlene says, amen. I can see it right now. I guarantee you, I still am. Ain't no doubt. In my mind, that's my bride. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, tomorrow, Friday, hang out with me as we're still in chapter six for the rest of the week here on the chat. Sunday morning. Come on in, guys. Come on in around 8.30. Grab a cup of coffee. Just sit back and chit-chat with us as we're just relaxing, getting ready for a great day in the Lord. Uh, Praise team and I will be rehearsing, getting ready. 9.30 Sunday school. Dr. Jones will be back in the house uh, and teaching our Sunday school. Uh, Plus, there's all kinds of Sunday school classes for all ages. Also starts at 9.30. And then we are right back in the Word, in the book of James. At 10.30, you do not want to miss it. Bring somebody with you. Tell them you'll sit by them at church. I mean, or sit six feet from them. I mean, we got a social distance, right? So come on in, be ready. Come on in and be expectant. Be excited about what God is going to do. Amen? Oh, amen, amen. All right, here we go. Chapter six. Yesterday, David and the boys, they just were not the best in the world when they went after the ark. They did some things wrong. You remember that? They put the, the, even though they had a brand new cart to put it on, they should have carried it. Okay. So there's still some, some, some disgust going on. I mean, God is not happy. Just, let's just make sure of that. Okay. God is not pleased. Because they have disobeyed direct commands out of Exodus and out of Numbers, okay? I mean, this God basically said, this is how you do it. And I don't know about you, but if God says this is how you do it, then bless God, that's the way we need to do it, amen? I mean, that's exactly how we need to do it. So when we get into this verse that we're going to start today in verse 6, we're going to see the anger of God unleashed. And I mean, it's it's just here. So go ahead. Verse six, y'all ready? And when they, hey, they're having a party right now. This is this big old production. You know, when we left off in five, David and all the house of Israel, they're playing music, they're dancing. I mean, it is a shindig, all right? It is a card-carrying, mind-blowing shindig. And it's huge. It's a big production. And when they came to to Nacon's threshing floor, okay, this they remember they're on their way in, okay. When they came there, and it's very ironic that they're at a threshing floor when we see the rest of this text. When they came 
to Nacon's threshing floor, Yuza, remember that's one of two brothers, okay, one of Abinadab's sons, uh, and that's where the ark has been for years. Yuza put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Okay, so now we know that you have oxen that are pulling this new cart that the Ark of the Covenant is in, driven by these two brothers. Okay, well now then, as they get to this threshing floor, the ox, he stumbles, he steps on a rock, he does something, and he, you know, adjusts and he stumbles, and what it does is it literally upturns the cart. And the ark is falling. Yuza reaches out to catch it or to stop it. And what he does is he puts his hand on it. All right. Now, let's just look for a minute at where we are. We're at the threshing floor. Okay. What, what goes on at a threshing floor? Just, just real quick. Here's just a real, real good example. The whole stalks of wheat, okay, are gathered, they're put in there, and this is where the, the, the chaff is separated from the wheat, okay? I mean, you get rid of the fluff to get the real deal, and, 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 and there's a whole lot of harshness that goes on. Uh, I mean, we're talking, you're, you're being sifted as wheat in order to get the true grain, the real product out, and you get rid of everything that looks like wheat, but it is not. It is the chaff. And of course, there's several examples all through the New Testament of the wheat versus the chaff. And you even see it in comparisons of the lost and the saved. Uh, and so this is this is a great illustration here that we have that's going to carry on in. But this is a real deal scene. This is actually taking place at a threshing floor, and there is so much things that's going on, and they're working hard here on this threshing floor. The thing is, is that when you parallel that against what's going on, there was a lot of fluff, a lot of chafe, if you will, in that whole production that David and the people were doing. It wasn't real. Remember that. This was not of God. If it was of God, they would have done it the proper way. They would have carried it in. They would have put it, uh, carried it on their individuals and carried it on in. And what took place is right here, God went in and blew the, the, the chafe away from the threshing floor, literally. Okay, so a lot, a lot, a lot of similarities. And when that oxen stumbled, and the ark goes to fall, what happens? Old boy sticks his hand out and he touches. And guys, it is strictly forbidden to touch the ark. You cannot do it. That's why there were pole holders on both sides. That's why certain poles were made. They were made a specific way for four men to carry it. You are not allowed to touch the ark, okay? It's just not there. And so right then, Yuza made a decision. Maybe he had a lapse in judgment. Who knows, okay? But he disregarded the command of God. Maybe he wasn't taught it. We just don't know. But the fact is, is that he did an absolute no-no against God. And he reached out and he touched it. And what seemed right to him was wrong in the eyes of God, okay? And that's why it is so vital for you and I to make sure that we go before God with our decision. Do you remember the text we covered back a couple of days ago? Back in chapter 5, it was verse 19. So David inquired of the Lord. Okay, this is what we've got to get to, folks. We've got to get through. And then it talked about the breakthrough that, that came through. The Lord had broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. This is what we've got to get to. Yuza just went on about his business. Now, he had the greatest of intentions, but it was wrong. I mean, it was wrong. And so you and I, guys, we can have the greatest of intentions. But if, if it is not of God, our intentions are pointless. It has to be of God. Got to know that. We got to know that. He stuck out his hand to the ark of the God to take hold of it or to hold it, literally to hold it in place. For the oxen stumbled. Verse 7. Here we go. You ready? Then the anger of the Lord 
Now, there's a lot of things I want to see in this world. The anger of God is not one of them. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Yuzo. It's not going to end well, folks. And God struck him there for his error or for his irrelevance or his irreverence. That's really the word we want to look at. Era, we, we, we translate into the word irreverence. In other words, there was no reverence toward that ark. And he showed that by placing his human hand on it. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Yuza, and God struck him there for his error or for his irreverence, and he died there by the ark of God. Okay, folks. Folks, God is not playing here, okay? He is not playing. The 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 law strictly it, it prohibited any Israelite contact with the, the ark of God, we find that back in Exodus 25. We find that in Numbers 4 on, on three different verses, verses 5, 15, and 20. Now, it, like I said, he was either not aware of it or he wasn't. He just disobeyed. But anyway, it was a sign of irreverence. And it just didn't take place. Now, what happened? He lost his life, okay? And it was... I mean, this was this was a, a flaw in his thinking when you just when you just think about it. I mean, to to use a when you think about that. I mean, if, if you're out and about and, and you've got you're working somewhere and something goes to fall. I mean, sure, we're going to make that 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 jump to try to catch it to keep it from falling. But we're not talking about a tool. We're not talking about something in your kitchen or or something in your household, okay? We're talking about the precious ark of God, and there was laws to follow, even laws to how to carry it. And Yuza just completely disregarded that. And it, to him, it didn't matter who carried the ark. To him, it didn't matter how the ark was carried. Uh, you know, it... All he knew is that this ark had been in his father's house for so long, it's almost like he took ownership of it. So, well, it's mine. I'll take care of it. I'll be able to do that. And, and it's almost as though Yusa thought that, well, God couldn't take care of it himself. Oh, that we're wrong. Let me tell you something. God has never lost control of anything. God is still in control of the world you and I live in. He is still in control of your life. He is still in control of my life. Even from this second forward, he knows exactly what's going to be taking place in one minute from now in our lives, much less in the in the future. We have to understand God has never lost control. And, and when you think about it, had that ark fallen, it would have been better for the ark to touch the ground than it would have been for man to touch it and to follow. That's just how powerful this is, all right? I mean, this is some humdinger of, of, of some, some information that's, that's coming forth. Now, when you think about it, maybe our boy Yuza forgot about what took place when the Philistines messed with it. And that would be back in, in 1 Samuel 5 and 6. You can go back and reread that if you want to. We covered that several weeks ago. And maybe uh, he forgot about what happened when, when the, the, the friends uh, looked into the ark in 1 Samuel 6, verse 19. Okay? God is not playing when it concerns the ark. It is just not going on. And so you've now got kaboom. One man has touched the ark. And he has now been killed. Verse 8. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Yuza. And he called the name of the place Perez Yuza to this day, and that's literally translated outburst against Yuza. That's the name of the place. David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? At that point, David realized what had not gone wrong. He had not asked God how the ark had come to him in the first place. David got it. But his anger, when you think about it, his anger was in confusion, okay? Because he couldn't still understand why, you know, Yusuf's intentions were still not good enough. Here's the thing. You can have the greatest intentions, and I'm going to say this again, but if they are not of God, 
What good are they? And we have to understand that God cares about not only our intentions, but our actions and our preliminaries that lead up to this. God's involved in our heart. He, he's interested in our heart, the reasons why we're doing it. That's what matters to God, okay? David knew that it was important to bring the ark of God into the center of Israel's life, okay? He knew that. He just went about it the wrong way, and it cost a man his life. He wanted all of Israel to be as excited as he was about the presence and about the glory of God because what happened to Yuza, David felt that he couldn't do what God wanted him to do at that point. He had to now rethink about it, and that's when he stopped and he went back to God. How could he do it without God? It's amazing what happens in our life to get us to the point to where we then ask, oh God, how should I do it? I've been there. Have you been there? I mean, you think that you've got the greatest intentions and you're trying to do something, and you're going on and going on, and then all of a sudden everything in its brother fails and then you're thinking, okay, Lord, how should I do this? And then God reveals it to you, and that's really the way you should have done it in the first place. Seek God first. Seek God first. Inquire of the Lord about your decisions. Inquire of the Lord. Make no mistake about it. There's no decision too small that you can't inquire of him to get answers for. He's, he's going to give you the answers. He's going to give you the answers. It's going to be yes, no, or let's wait a little while. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. What decisions do you need to inquire of God today? What's going on in your life that maybe you're kind of confused over? Maybe you want to do something, but maybe it's all you and you want, really want to think, oh, I don't want to be it in the flesh. I want to know if it's of God. What is it? Maybe it's for you personally. Maybe it's for your family. Maybe it's for your church. Inquire of the Lord. I don't know about you. I'm praying for breakthroughs. Amen. I'm praying for breakthroughs because that's the God we serve and he is ready to give them out. We just got to come to him first. Mm -mm -mm. Folks, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this beautiful hot Wednesday here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. We have got church going on tonight, and if you get a chance, we want to invite you to come on over, and we want you to hang out with us. It's going to start at 6.30 tonight on campus. We are going to broadcast the Bible study, but we'd like to see your sweet smile and face right there with us. Come on in. Enjoy a cup of coffee. Hang out with us, and let's dive deeper into the book of Philippians. We would love to have you there. If you get out today, remember, folks, it is going to be smoking hot, smoking hot. Please be careful. Don't overheat, okay? Don't overheat. And if you see anybody today, tell them about Jesus. I'm out here, guys. I'll see you guys tonight, 630.